International Silver Company presents The Silver Theater. Starring Rosalind Russell and James Stewart in Up From Darkness, directed by Conrad Nagel. Brought to you in behalf of two of the greatest names in silverware, International Sterling, world-famous solid silver, and 1847 Rogers Brothers, America's finest silver plate. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Conrad Nagel. I want to welcome you to the fourth of the new series of Silver Theater Dramatic Productions. In weeks to come, you'll hear such stars as Francho Tone, Helen Hayes, Ginger Rogers, Betty Davis, and Clark Gable, playing in stories by America's foremost authors. Today, we are proud to welcome back to Silver Theater MGM's brilliant stars, Rosalind Russell and James Stewart, in the first episode of Up From Darkness, a two-part radio play especially adapted for us by True Boardman, from an original story by Grover Jones. Our town is Middleton, in the heart of America's great coal mining region. Our people, a girl called Michael, played by Rosalind Russell, and a boy called Tim, played by James Stewart. Hey, Mom, you hear that? The old pipe organ of prosperity. Work tomorrow. Oh, sure, it is fine music, Tim. Now, Mom, where's my clean shirt? On the table. Oh, oh yeah, I got it. You'll never guess who I saw in town to me. Oh. Michael Gargan. The boss? Well, who didn't see him? Didn't he come down on the mine every day? No, not him. Her, his daughter. Mickey? Mm -hmm. She come back from college just this morning. I saw her in Coburn. No. Yes. Well, what do you know? She's back, huh? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Mom, you can start supper. I'm all washed up now. So Mickey's back. Well, what's what what she look like? What'd she say? What's she, she still got those freckles? <laughs> She's got no freckles now, Tim. Or if she has, you can't see them. What, Mickey Gargan and no freckles? Uh, what's, uh... Well, just remember, Tim, boy, four years at college can make a lot of difference in a girl. Oh, and now don't pester me. I've got to get supper on the table. Your brother will walk in here, star. Oh, no, there's plenty of time. He hasn't even finished shot firing yet. I can tell because... Joe, of... shot firing? Oh, yeah, sure. Didn't he tell you? Yeah, Pud Llewellyn got hurt yesterday, and... Yeah, he lit a short fuse and didn't make it to the breakthrough in time, so they... Had to have a new shot fire, so Joe's it. So I, I thought he told you. No, he didn't. Well, hey, Mom, why that long look? It's a break for Joe. What means more pay? Besides, you know, Mike Gargan said he wanted Joe to work every job in the mine, but that boss got real plans for Joe, yeah, Mom. I know, this... I know. Well, besides, somebody got to blast out the coal for us. Who can do the job better than Joe? <laughs> That's right. Nobody. Hey. You know what? I'll bet if we give a listen, we'll be able to hear some of the shots he sets off down there. Now, the last rooms he'll be firing in are Nielsen's and Hughes's, and they're in the new rooms just off Main North. I pulled a trip down there today, and I was saying to myself, I said, I'll bet this entry is so close under our house that if I sing loud enough, Mom will be hearing me up there, you know? Oh, Tim Barlow, <laughs> 700 feet down, and you talk about... Ah, you're crazy as a blind dog in a meat house. Listen, what'd I tell you? That's, that's in Nielsen's room. I bet my shirt on it. Now there'll be, let's see, there'll be two more shots in Nielsen's and four in Hughes's. Six more shots and you can put on the stake. Joe will be up before it's done. Mom, did you hear me? Yes, Timmy, I heard you. Six, did you say? And that's one of them. Oh, hey, Mom, look what's happened to you. You're getting jittery because Joe sets off a few shots? Uh, I'll get used to it like I get used to everything. Two. Now, Mom, now, quit it, will you? Joe knows how to take care of himself. Come on, now, tell me more about Mickey. Hmm? Ah, uh, never you mind about Miss Michael Gargan. Just because you went to high school together, you don't need to think... Ah, oh, Mom, you're deaf. I'm not thinking anything. Well, I think I'll go down to the temple and meet Joe when he comes up. And, oh, Mom, uh, press my good pants for tomorrow, will you? <laughs> All right, Tim. Three. I see. Home one day and you're wrecking the place. 
place. Dad. <laughs> Hello, Michael, girl. Oh, gosh, how oh, I've missed you. Uh, how about me? Yeah, let me look at you. <laughs> well, are they all through with you up at that school? Well, I'm through with them. How about it? Do you think you got your money's worth? And yeah, I'm not sure yet. Of course, I'm not exactly used to the idea of a gargan being so darned educated. Never happened before. Well, give me time and I'll live it down. <laughs> I hope so. Oh, you're just in time to help, Dad. That crayon portrait of Uncle Joseph has leered at us about 20 years too long. Down it comes. It's the beginning of the revolution. Oh, is it? It is. First the pictures come down, and then that stove out of the middle of the living room. I'm going to make this place livable, Dad. I'm going to do... Now, the hold on, wait a minute. You're going to do nothing of the kind. Now, Mike Gargan, just because you own a coal mine, you don't have to live like a mule skinner. No? Now, you listen to me, young woman. Every man in this town calls me by my first name. And it's going to stay that but way. But, Dad, that still doesn't mean your house has to look like a museum. This place is almost as out of date as, uh, as your mind. Now, never mind the mind. Stick to something you know something about. I do know something about it. I know that 70 men have been killed down there in the last five years, and that other men are being injured there every day. All right. What are they worth? Well, maybe being your daughter, I think something ought to be done about it. Yeah, I suppose you'll be doing it. You probably had a very fine college course on problems of the minor or something. Now you come home and tell me how to run things. <laughs> Yeah, that's swell. Of course, the mere fact that you've never been down in the mine, that doesn't make any that's difference. That's not fair, Dad. I... Oh. oh, what's the matter with us? I'm home an hour, and we're right where we left off when I went away. Battling about the mine. Yeah, you're right. It's my fault. I, I'm sorry, girl. Dad, while I was away, I thought about this a lot. Let's, let's talk it out, hmm? All right, Michael. First of all... What you said about my never being down in the mine, having gone down into it, well, uh, I would have a long time ago accepted I... That uh... you're free. Yeah. I know that, girl. I've always known it. But I don't think you know why, Dad. You know the very first thing I remember as a kid? It was the shriek of that wildcat whistle that means the new disaster somewhere down there under the ground. Even before I was old enough to understand, I sensed the horror and terror that lay behind that sound. Sure. I know, girl. I, I can't tell you what it did to me. The dread it gave me. The, the thought of being part of something that could destroy so many lives. That's why I came to hate the mind, Dad. And I do hate it. But there's something else that I hate even more. That's letting you down. <laughs> you see, I've, I've always let you down. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Michael is a boy's name, Dad. Oh, you made yourself pretend that you were glad I was a girl. And you called me Michael anyway. But that couldn't make me another Mike Gargan. To grow up in the mine and to love it as you've loved it. Oh, you're crazy. No, I'm not, Mike. And because of that, I want you to know that I'm going to do something about the way I feel toward the mine. Sure, I'm afraid of it. I'm petrified of it. But I'll lick that fear, Mike. I've got to going to. But look, Miss Mike, it's no good for you just hang around mine all day. It's all right, young. But what you do here? Just standing hours and look at mine. In your face, it... You feel sick, maybe? No, no, Jan, it's all right. Maybe you're here to wait for somebody, huh? No, no, never mind, Jan, please. Tell me, that bunch of miners who came up in the cage, was that the last load for today? I mean, I mean, is there no one left working down there now? No, one more load. There, cage just come up now. This last one. I don't care if you've been cage for 40 years. Good night, boys. Well, I just feel differently about the whole thing. He's trying to set the world on fire or something. Well, night, Jan. Night, Tim. Mickey. Well, Mickey, how are you? Tim. Tim Barlow. Gee, it's great to see you, Mickey. I, I heard you were back. Mom told me you were... Come on, let's... Come on, sit over here in this crate. Here, I'll dust it off for you. you say you... You look swell. You sure do. How, how was that college business? College? Oh, it was fine. Hey, you you feeling all right? Y yes, yes, Tim. Well, you're waiting for your dad, huh? No. No, no, I just came down to see the mine. 
to see the mine. Uh-huh. You. Gee, as far back as I can remember, you always wanted to stay just as far away from the mine as you could get. You... Tim, you, uh, you've changed. I, I didn't recognize you. Oh, yeah. Well, it's pretty hard to keep clean. No, there. it isn't your face, Tim. Or your clothes or anything like that. It's... Oh, you used to be taller. Why do you stoop over like that? Oh, I... You just get used to it, I guess. You're down in the oh, tunnels, you know. You... I see. <laughs> so you're still here, working down there, I mean. Just like all the rest of them. Going down there every morning before dawn, coming out every afternoon. Well, what do you mean? Well, sure, I'm still in the mine. Why shouldn't I be? Say, I'm a skinner now, Mickey. But it's four years, Tim. Surely in four years you've had time to find something better than working down in that blackness. I mean, a job where you could accomplish something. What do you mean? I am accomplishing something. I helped get that black stuff out of there, and you know what that stuff does? It makes light for people and heat, and it runs factories, and it's a kind of magic that stuff is. It's like that lamp that guy, Aladdin, what's his name, had. Why don't I accomplish something with it? Like that. Tim. Hmm. Take me down in the mine. Take you down the mine. Now. I want to see it and know it and feel it. All of it. The shaft, every entry, every room. Oh, no, wait out. That doesn't make sense, Mickey. You're scared to death of going down there. I know that. That doesn't matter, Tim. Believe me, I've got to go down there. If I'm scared, I'll get over it. I've got to, Tim. My name is Michael Gargan. Oh, yeah, you're... Yeah. All right. I think I got it, but, Mickey, your dad will probably... can't even know. Me. I'd rather he didn't until... Until I've licked at Jim. Oh, please. Please, Jim, take me down. All right, Mickey. It's all sort of crazy, but... If it really matters to you, I'll do it. I'll take you down. <laughs> just heard Act One of the first episode of Up From Darkness, starring Rosalind Russell and James Stewart. Before the second act starts, a young man steps from behind the silver curtain with a grateful word for living in this generation. John Conti. We don't talk about it very much, but I think at heart we all realize how fortunate we are to be living in a generation that makes it so easy for us all to enjoy the finer things of life. Take that most cherished of women's possessions... Lavish sterling silver, solid silver through and through. Today, modern methods of silversmithing, modern skill and craftsmanship have brought solid silver within the reach of nearly everyone. For example, do you know that right now you can get an individual place setting in International Sterling's thrilling Enchantress pattern, six distinctive pieces of solid silver for only $16.75? Well, you can And believe me, Enchantress is a pattern of incredible beauty. It's modern in its graceful sweeping lines and exquisite proportions, and yet it's romantic, too, in the delicate bit of carving at either side. But see Enchantress at your silverware dealers tomorrow. When you do, when you realize that here is silver loveliness that will never fade, when you find out for how little and on what easy terms you can own the solid silver you've always longed for, I know you are going to own International Sterling's Enchantress. And now the curtain is rising on the concluding act of the first episode of Up From Darkness, starring Rosalind Russell as Michael and James Stewart as Tim. The time and scene are the same. I don't know, Tim. All of us say no visitors in mind when shot firing going on. Yeah, but, Jan, we won't go where Joe's working. Please, Jan, it's all right. Hey, your father know you go down in mine? Well, no, but he doesn't need to know. Please, Jan. Well, okay. You get on cage, I send you down. Okay, Jan. Come on, Mickey. Oh, wait. Oh, wait till I get my cap. Hold on a minute, Jan. All right, Tim. Here, you better wear one, too. Thank you. Uh, hold still while I light your pit lamp. Now I'll light your for you. Okay. Hey, your hand's shaking there. I think maybe I better light it myself. Now. 
Okay, Jan. Okay, Tim. Down you go. It, it goes down pretty fast, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, I should have warned Jan to run it slow. Well, what, what happened? No, no, it's just a little too much speed. The cable slapped, that's all. There ought to be something to hold on to in this cage. It's not safe like this. I mean, it should be all closed no, in. No, no, it's it. okay. It's okay when you get used to it. Now, if your ears feel funny, try yawning. That, that always does the trick. What was that? Oh, it just hit the bottom of the shaft. Well? Well, how about it, Mickey? Back. I can't see anything. Uh, you will. Just, just fix your eyes a while to get used to it, that's all. Come on, we'll walk up the main entry. All right. Oh, Tim, Tim, the ground's wet right here. It's soaking. Oh, sure, yeah. I didn't think of that. That seat is always like that. Of course, it's not so good on those shoes. Oh, that doesn't matter. You see, up in there... Oh, so well, be careful. Almost walked into that lead wire. That 1,200 volts in that circuit. You mean a wire like that is left exposed in this darkness? Oh, yeah, sure. Well, everybody knows where it is. Besides. Uh, Tim! A... What? There, just how I saw something. Something more. Oh, yeah, well, that's just a little wrap. There's a lot of them down here. They, they won't hurt you. Come on, I uh, think you better take a hold of my arm. Yes. Maybe I better have. Keep your head down when you're walking. Be better now? Yes, I think so. Sure you can. Uh-huh. You know, I know a miner who would never wear a cap when he works. You know what he used for light? False. Lightning bugs. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, he used to go out the night before and capture just one lightning bug, put it in a bottle. Then the next day, he'd bring it down here. He'd work by that light all day. And then one day, the lightning bug fainted, and then he couldn't see at all. Hey, uh, you were supposed to laugh at that. That's some joke, right? I guess I, I don't feel much like laughing right now. Yeah, well, yeah, I can just try. Tim, those things up there, what do you call them? Well, they're cap pieces. But they look loose. Yeah, so they do. What if they give way? The roof caves right in. Does it do that often? Yeah, every now and then. How can you just pass it off like that? If the shaft does fall in, it means... It means... Tim, aren't you afraid yourself? Afraid? I don't know. I never thought about it very much. I guess if I did, I might be. Uh, you see, Mickey, you, you get used to that down here. All these things that bother you, they're, they're just part of our job. Even men being killed. Even that. Now, look, Mickey, can't you understand? No, no, I can't understand. It's horrible down here. Even worse than I imagined. The dark, the cold, the dampness, as if that weren't enough. Oh, Jim! Ah! It's all right. It's all, Mickey. I should have warned you. Those are the shock fires. Now, Joe, my brother, is blasting out coal for the men to load tomorrow. I'm sorry, I... Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I should have warned you. Mickey, don't you want to go back up? No. No, I'm all right. Let's go on. John? John? Huh? Oh, Mike. Uh, hello, Mike. You, huh? Hello, Mike. Hello, Jan. Uh, this is one fine day, Mike. That's right. Yeah, no rain. No? No, it's, it's a fine day, Mike. Hey, what's the matter with you? I didn't come down here to talk about the weather. I'm going down. Get over there and drop the cage. Will you go down to the mine, Mike? But, uh, but Joe's down there, Mike. Joe shot fiery. I know that. That's why I'm going. Good lad, Joe, but still new on that job, and I don't want to take any chances with him. Yeah, but, Mike, I think maybe... Hey, listen, Jan. I don't pay you to think... I pay you to run these cages. Now get over there and drop me down and move. Yeah, Mike. Yeah, sure, Mike. Sure. Uh-huh. Now, 
this is we're coming to, Mickey, is a park. That's where this is. Oh. oh. I just got to get used to those. I uh, sure you will. Hey, you dropped your cap. Huh? Oh, yes. Here, here. Boy, you, you don't look much like four years of college now, Miss Gary. <laughs> Hold still. I swear I'll get that smudge off of you. There. Thanks. You're... You're swell, you know that? Mickey, uh, I... Maybe this isn't the time or place to tell you, but I... Well, all the time you were away, going all sorts of places with all sorts of people, and... Well, I was right here. And I was thinking about just one person. Timmy! Of course, you may not think that you've ever been down here before, but... I want to tell you, you have, Mickey. You've been riding around down in here for years with me. Oh, I'm glad, Timmy. True, Tim, Holly! They're going out! Hey, Tim, down there where Joe is. Come on! Hey, Tim, down there where Joe is. Come on! Cargan, your father, and your brother, Tim, they're in there, caught in a fall. Dad! Aye, we just come down to inspect. The shot went off and the roof fell in. They're caught in there, both of them. No, no! Mickey, wait. Are all the shots fired off, John? I don't know. But we'll take a chance. You stay here, Mickey. I won't. I'm coming with you. We've got to get them out. <laughs> Well, time to finally come in the mine. Darling, I... Tim, Tim, listen. This messes things up. I, I counted on Joe to keep things going. I help Michael. She needs help. She, she doesn't know the mine like, like we do. She... Don't worry, Mike. Oh, she hear that, Michael girl... Mike, first name. Oh, remember what I told you. When they call you by your first name, you're okay. Even, even if you did that. Easy, easy, easy. No use in that. No use. My father's dead. Can't you understand that? My God, my father. Yeah. And so was my brother. So was my father, almost like this two years ago. You, you just stand there, not even cry, not say anything, just accept him. The mine, Mickey, it'll always be the mine for me someday, and for you too, unless you stay up above where women belong. Why did my father die, Tim? For what good reason? That passage could have been braced and saved strong enough for a hundred glass slices. Mickey, listen to me. It's not just Dan. It's for Joe and your father. It's for all the others who have died and still others who will die if this place has its way. Mickey. Look at it. Live wires left exposed and cables unprotected and cages that are death traps in themselves. You're talking wild. You don't know what you're oh, saying. Oh, yes, Mickey. I know. This mine belongs to me now. And I'm going to fight it. I know that I can fight this monster that you and all the others just accept. I'll fight it alone if no one else will help me. But I'll make it pay for Michael Gargan's death. If it's the only thing I ever do in life, I'll beat this mine. <laughs> Thank you.
In just a moment, you'll hear about what's in store for you in next week's episode of Up From Darkness, starring Rosalind Russell and James Stewart. But right now, here's a man to offer you something very special. John Conti. For many of you, this fall holds a really gala occasion. The day when someone in your family or one of your friends, someone you hold very dear, walks up the church aisle in veil and orange blossoms to the romantic strains of Lohengrin. And if you'd like to make your wedding gift to that bride as memorable as the occasion, you'll give the gift of every woman's dreams. Beautiful silverware. Solid silver, like the international sterling silver we spoke about earlier in the program, or the finest in silver plate, 1847 Rogers Brothers, First Love. First Love, so named by Rosalind Russell, one of the stars of our silver theater performance tonight, represents the latest and greatest achievement of the famous house of 1847 Rogers Brothers. It's a pattern whose lovely ornament is deeply etched and raised in high relief, in a perfection of craftsmanship never before available in silver plate. You can see this sensational pattern at your silverware dealers now. In fact, in order that you may see it, 1847 Rogers Brothers are making a special offer of a small distinctive serving fork. A fork which ordinarily costs a dollar and a half, but which you can now have for only 25 cents. When you go to your silverware dealer tomorrow for your fork, When you actually see its rare, rich beauty, I know you'll not only want a complete first love service for the bride, you'll want one for yourself, too. And you can have one easily. Your silverware dealer will tell you on what really convenient terms you can own the aristocrat of silver plate, 1847 Rogers Brothers' First Love. shot firers go that way. It gets them. But you can't do these things, Mickey. It's mining. You'll break yourself against it, Mickey. And, Miss Gargan, we miners ain't stepping back into the shaft until them machines of yours come out. Let it destroy all of you. Stand by and watch it while it kills. But I won't. I'll destroy it to you here. I'll destroy it! This is the fight that Michael Gargan must wage. Not alone against the terror that she feels, but against the very people she would raise up from darkness. Next week at the same time, the Silver Theater will star Rosalind Russell and James Stewart in the concluding episode of Up From Darkness, directed by Conrad Nagel, with original music scored and conducted by Felix Mills. And in the meantime, if you want solid silver, you want international sterling. If you want silver plate, you want 1847 Rogers Brothers, both proudly created by International Silver Company. Rosalind Russell will next be seen in the Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer production, The Citadel. James Stewart can next be seen in the MGM production, Ice Follies. This is John Conti speaking. Thank you.